So this is a constant current source. What is a constant current source? Constant current source is a source of current that is independent of the voltage that is across it. This is in contrast to, say you had five LEDs that you wanted to illuminate and you had the traditional kind of method of limiting the current through LEDs, which would be a current limiting resistor. So it would be something like this. And this current limiting resistor would be sized so that the voltage drop across these LEDs, the expected voltage drop, about 2 volts for each LED. The total, which would be 10 volts here since we have 5 LEDs, so that's subtracted from the source voltage to give you 2 volts left over. So this will use up 10 volts of the 12 volt source, which would give you a leftover 2 volts across the current limiting resistor. You would simply size that, say if you wanted 10 milliamps to go through these LEDs, you would simply size that resistor so that 10 milliamps would go through that. And if you had 2 volts across it, you would have approximately a 200 ohm resistor if you wanted 10 milliamps to go through it. So in this case, these LEDs for this simulation actually were a little under 2 volts, so we ended up with 235 ohms to get 10 milliamps. So this would be kind of the traditional way of limiting current for LEDs in this example. Suppose you wanted to, though, cut four of these LEDs out of the circuit. If you did that, you would only have a 2 volt drop here, and that would leave you with 10 volts across this resistor. And you would end up with something like this. So you would cut these LEDs out of the circuit here, but you would have only you would have 10 volts across this resistor, which would result in a lot more current because the current through a resistor is equal to the voltage divided that by that resistance. If you increase the voltage drop across it, you're going to have a lot more current going through it. And so in this case, we're going to end up with about 42 milliamps going through one LED, and it would just burn this LED out because these LEDs typically aren't going to be able to handle 42 milliamps, standard LEDs. So you wouldn't want that to happen. So the answer to this problem would be a constant current source here. And what that does is maintains the current through these LEDs, regardless of how many LEDs you have in the circuit, regardless how many, what the voltage drop is across the load, and thus the voltage drop across the current limiting circuit. So this is what's known as a constant current source or independent current source. It's independent of the voltage that appears across it. So you have something like this. So the way this works is we're going to have two diodes here that will create a constant voltage at the, the base of this transistor here, this NPN transistor. There's going to be a resistor, a base resistor of 2.2K, and I'll tell you why it's 2.2K a little bit later. And that's going to result in about 1.4 volts right here. It's actually 1.47. And this base to emitter junction is going to be about 0.7 volts, and that's going to give us approximately 0.7, a little over 0.7 volts across this resistor. So in knowing that, we size this resistor so that it's going to have 10 milliamps going through it because the emitter current is going to be approximately the collector current. In fact, the collector current is going to be about 99 point something percent of the emitter current. So. For all practical purposes, it's going to be the same as the emitter current. So if you have 10 milliamps going through this resistor here, you're going to have 10 milliamps going through the collector and through the LEDs, regardless of how many LEDs you have there. And that's because these two diodes here are going to maintain this voltage right here. If that voltage is maintained, this voltage has to be maintained. If that voltage is maintained, then you have to have a constant current, maintained current going through that resistor and through these LEDs. Now suppose you went and you cut these four LEDs out of here again, and that's what we'll go ahead and do. So you, as you can see, we've got 
9.76 milliamps going through these LEDs right here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple of these out of the circuit here. So this is the other side of this amp meter here. So this is what we had originally. We've got 9.76 milliamps. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead and just cut a couple of them out. And now we've got 9.8 milliamps, which is pretty close. We're still under 10 milliamps, or, or we're still approximately 10 milliamps. So come up here, and we're just going to we're going to cut four of these LEDs out of the circuit, which was this scenario here for a for a dependent current source, and we still have about 10 milliamps. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and cut all the LEDs out, and I'm actually going to create a short circuit. So we cut all these LEDs out. We have a complete short circuit here, and we still have 10 milliamps. So it's working great, and it's just simply a, a single transistor, constant current source with a couple of su supporting components. And the actual value of this resistor right here, this is a base resistor. It serves two purposes. It serves to pass current through these LEDs. It serves to pass current through these LEDs. And to also, so most of the current is going to go through there. A little bit of that current is going to go into the base here. And the amount of current going through that base is dictated by the gain of this transistor. You have 10 milliamps going through here. The gain of this transistor, a 2N394, is around 200, a little under 200. So you're going to have about 1 200th of that. And so we've actually ended up with in this simulation here, actually ended up with about 50 microamps, which ha happens to be the 10 milliamps divided by 200. Now, if I were to go ahead and measure that base current, we're going to get about 50 microamps right there. So, I'll go ahead and hook this back up. There we go. So the detailed calculations uh, uh, regarding this, regarding this circuit here, you can, you can find them on breadboardcircuits.com. Just go to breadboardcircuits.com and enter the search term constant current, and you'll find this, this uh, article on this right here. So that's a constant current source. It is actually more of a current sink, um, but um, it is independent of the voltage drop across it and across the load up to a certain point. You have to design it for the scenarios that you expect it to, to be in place. And uh, that is as opposed to a dependent current source which would be where the current source depends on the voltage drop across it. That would not be appropriate for this scenario if you were changing the um, actual, actual voltage drop of the load itself. So that's a simple single transistor constant current source. If you want to go ahead and build this circuit, here's the parts list right here. For minimum breadboarding equipment, go to breadboardcircuits.com. There's a list of things that I recommend you have. And the quarter watt resistor kit, you'll probably want to have that if you're building these types of circuits. This is a schematic. And this is a picture of the breadboard with the components in it and the schematic references superimposed. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for more detailed information on this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com. Thank you.